Hello and welcome. It's been a busy week at work for me, so a pretty quiet week for videos, uh, but I am still gearing up for the XL World Cup knockout rounds starting tomorrow, so I thought I'd uh, do one more to keep me fresh. Uh, and someone asked me if I could post the full solution to this one from last year's FMWC Open, Dominate the Dominoes. Uh, this was one of the problems that a sort of mini version of uh, was featured in the in the Asia qualifier round. Um, it's a, it's a really nice question, quite a tough one. Um, I tested it out um, last year, um, and part of the appeal of doing it again was actually realizing that uh, I could do it in a completely different way from how I did it last year, uh, because you know, because now I have have and have somewhat learned to use dynamic arrays, uh, and that that lets me do a lot more stuff. So, uh, just give you a quick introduction to what the game is about. Um, you know, in, in each uh, case, we've got uh, 28 dominoes. If you're not familiar with dominoes, just tiles with, uh, you know, dice pips on each side. So you've got a, you know, a lookup table here to tell you, you know, this is the one with zero on each side. This is the one with a one and a six and so on down. Um, and uh, there are 28 laid out. You deal them out in alternating turns. So player one gets this one, two gets this one, one, two, one, two, one, two, uh, for the first 14, and then the remaining 14 go in a draw pile that people can draw from if they're not able to play. Um, and so the uh, the logic, um, I'm going to kind of summarize a little bit, but the logic we're given is for player one starts, and player one starts by playing uh, a double, meaning something that has the same number of both sides. In this case, they've got double three or double four. And if they have multiple doubles, they play the one with the lowest number of pips. So then they take that, put it on the board like that. And then for each subsequent turn, uh, a player can play a domino that can match one end of the line. So you'll, you'll kind of add to one end or the other of the line and build out. And you have to play something that can match, uh, match one of the ends. So right now, both ends are three. So player two can play anything with a three. So can play that, 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 that. Can play this one or this one. They can play either of the last two. And the tiebreaker, we're told, is uh, player two will play the one that has the most pips. So in this case, this one has nine pips. This one has four. So I want to play this one uh, and add that to the end of the line. And in the event of a tiebreaker, if they have more than one that can be played and that have the same number of pips, they'll play them in the order they were drawn. So in other words, this is the first tile they got, second tile, third tile. If these two were both valid, then they'd play this one because it comes up first. So now at the ends of the line, we've got a three and a six. So player one can play anything that has a three or a six. So they can't play that or that. They can play a six zero. Can't play that, can't play that, can't play that. So the only thing they can play is the six zero. Uh, now, in, in the real game, you just turn it around to put, you know, this six next to that six. I can't turn it around, so I'm just going to drop it under there. Uh, and then back to player two. So now the ends of the line are a, th a three and a zero. So they can play their double zero, mm, or they can play the three one. So again, they'll play the one with the more pips, which is that one. They put the three next to the three, so now the ends of the line are a one and a two. So that's the first few rounds of the game. Um, and then... Uh, and that's it for level four. You just play, each player plays two turns each, and then you figure out the total value of the pips that they have left between the two of them. Uh, and then for level five, there's a couple of additional twists. One, they might not be able to play on a given turn, and if they can't play, then the remaining 14 tiles that neither of them had go into a draw pile. So you draw one from the top of the pile if you can't play any of your own. And if that one is one that you could play at one end or the other of the line, then you play that on the same turn. Otherwise, you hold on to it and you, you keep it for the next turn. That's the first twist. And the second twist is you could have a situation where both ends of the line, um, sorry, where you have a tile that matches both ends of the line. So here, for example, the line ends with a one and a zero. So if you had Actually, in this case, player one has. If you had a one zero tile, you could either play the one next to that one, and then the line would end with two zeros, or you could play the zero next to that zero, and the line would end with two ones. And the tiebreaker for that, to refresh my memory, is you, yeah, you leave, you uh, leave the smaller number of exposed pips. So in other words, in this case, you'd play the one next to the one. Uh, and leave the zeros exposed. The logic being that if there's zeros exposed or if there's the lower number exposed, then your opponent will, on average, be able to play a lower number of pips and you want to get rid of as many of your pips as you can. I think that's all the tiebreakers. Um, I don't know, if you wanna, if you wanna read all the details, uh, you know, download the case and, and have a look, but I'm gonna dive on in. So the, the first three levels are basically just kind of, you know, can you manipulate the, uh, the tiles? Uh, and then level four and level five are playing the game. So let's start at the start. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, just because it'll uh, be helpful to have later, 
uh, I'm going to add two more columns here. Um, one is just the total number of pips, uh, and the second is, is it a double? Uh, it's going to be that equals that. I'll just format that as. Um, because I'll use the, use both of those later. All right, so first thing is, how many pips in total will it be on the 14 tiles that both players draw before the game? Now, the first challenge is that all the tiles are just given in one cell. Um, so you could text columns, but like I said, part of the, the reason that I'm kind of revisiting this case is because uh, we're in the brave new world of dynamic arrays now. So I'm going to show you how to do it with dynamic arrays. So the first thing we'll do is text split. Um, because they're split up by spaces. Otherwise, you could do mid-sequence uh, to split it up based on length, but we don't need to do that right now. I'm going to split it to columns just to lay it out down this uh, down this column. Um, so that gives you the, the dominoes that you have. Then you can use take to just get the first 14, because it's you're just interested in the 14 uh, that both players have. So take the first, whoops, not 12, take the first 14 rows. That gives me that. And I'm going to X look up that. Uh, into the table, lock that, and return from the total number of pips on both sides. And that gives me, so you can see here the first one has 6 and 0, so that's 6, the second one has 5 and 2, so that's 7, and so on across. Uh, and then I just wrap that in a sum. And that is the answer. So I'll drop that in here, and I've set up conditional formatting here, so these will turn green if I'm getting the answers right. So Luckily, so far I am. Uh, okay, so now the next one. Uh, how many pips in total will, be, will there be on just player one's tiles? Um, now, you might want to think about kind of laying out your workings in a bit more detail, uh, which I'm going to do when I get to actually playing the game later. But for now, these are all kind of doable in one cell. So I'm going to show you just more out of interest than anything how to do that. So uh, this this piece in the middle here that I'm summing up, xlookup, gives me the, the 14 values. So what I want is the ones that go to player one. So you go one, two, one, two, one, two. So in other words, I want all the odd numbered ones. So I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to say if is odd sequence 14, then give me that. Otherwise, give me zero. And then I'm going to sum that up. That, sorry, I just need to point that down to this one here. And then that checks out. All right, so that's all good. And then the last question is uh, total number of pips on the doubles both players have. So I'll go back up to this one, which gives me the sum of all of them. Uh, actually, no, let me take this one because that has an if in it already. Uh, but so now instead of saying, uh, instead of splitting on is out of that, I'm going to split on look up here to find out if it's a double or not. So I'm going to take the same, actually, I guess. Yeah, don't mind. I, I could I could use a, a let so that I don't have to calculate this twice, but it's a small enough calculation that it's not worth the time. So I'm just going to say if this, uh, and then instead of returning from column F, I'm going to return from column G, which is the double column. Uh, so if that, you can say if equals one, or if you don't specify equals one, it'll just treat one as true and false, and zero as false. Uh, so that gives me that. Okay, so that's that. Now let's get on to the trickier part of actually playing the game. So for this, I'm going to go to a separate sheet. Uh, I'll put in example four here, and then I'm going to X look up that. So the, this, just to explain briefly, this is going to be my game selector. So I'll, you know, I'll make that 51 or example four or example five or whatever, uh, and then you know, that will drive all the calculations on this sheet. And then at the end, I'll do a data table, which will basically say, you know, Excel, tell me what whatever output from here that I want would be if this was 51, 52, 53, 54, corresponding to the game numbers here. So I'm going to X look up this in column C, returning from column H. That gives me that, and then same as before, I'm going to text split that. Text split. It's getting dark here. I'm going to put on a light. In case I'm looking weird in the dark. Um, I'm looking weird in the light as well, but never mind. Uh, so I'll do sequence 28, just have numbers next to it. Uh, domino. 
and then I'm going to import all the values from here that I need. And to do that, I'm going to say it's look up this and lock the column hash in here. Lock returning from here. And here I'm going to lock the columns, but not the rows, so I can copy that across. Oh, whoops, must have just overwritten. Missed a comma, I guess. So I'm going to look up in here. And that'll give me all the different values. Okay. Um, so now, uh, I'm going to say initial setup, and that's going to be one, two. And then all of these are in the draw pile. Uh, and then I'm going to say, what round is it? One, two, three, four. Uh, we have to do up to 10 rounds. So just, we could have just done sequence to do that across. Yeah, too late. Uh, then player. Um, so I'm going to say, if is odd this, then one, otherwise two. And what? Very surprised that it doesn't like that. Really? Is odd can't take an array? That doesn't make any sense. Wow, I'm I'm occasionally still surprised by what things dynamic arrays can or cannot do, but anyway, never mind. Won't worry too much about it. So uh, now what does the player play? Now it's gonna be a different formula uh for the first round because there's a different logic for it so let's start with that uh, i'm going to say um, so an interesting um interesting little kind of challenge here i want to um i want to find the double with the fewest uh with the fewest pips that player one has and so to do that i'm going to want to both filter this data, so filter it to where it's a double and to where it's player one, but also sort it by the total number of pips. So the challenge here is that you can, you basically have to do kind of one thing and then the other. So in other words, I can filter this to just get uh, the list of things that are one of those or the other and then sort it, um, or I can sort and then filter. I think the easiest way is probably to say filter H stack. So I'm going to want uh, the number, lock that. Uh, and next to that, I'm going to want the total number of pins. And again, I'll lock that. Uh, so H stack those, and then I'm going to filter that where uh, this is equal to one times this. And again, you can say that equals one or not. I'm not worrying about locking because this is a unique formula. I'm not going to copy it across. So if I do that filter, it says I can play either number one, which is double three, or number five, which is double four. So then I want to sort uh, this on column two, and I'm interested in the smallest one, so we'll say ascending. Uh, and then I just want to take the first of those. So I'm just going to index that one, one. So in other words, I want to take uh, number one. Um, so then I'm going to say my header here is just going to be the round number. So basically the setup I want to have is I want to have the the configuration between what player one has done, what player two has done, what's still in the draw pile and what's on the board after each round. And then I'll do some other kind of calculations up top to figure out things like what's at the ends. So uh, if player one plays one, then I'm just going to say if this equals this, then that goes on the board. Uh, otherwise, oh, for now I'll just make it otherwise that. Um, we'll need to factor in drawing as well. So uh, let's say, pull this back a little. Next draw. So the top of the draw pile is always going to start off being 15. And again, I'll just format that because it's going to be a unique one. Um, and then, so I'm going to have to 
the, this first one, we can always assume that player one has a double. Uh, I think that's kind of the logic of the game. But after that, we're going to have to allow for the possibility that nothing is played. So I'm going to make that a, a double quotes if they're not able to play anything. So here I'm going to say if uh, if the thing that you play was the draw card, and we'll have to factor in the logic to figure out how that happens, or uh, the thing that you play is nothing. In both of those cases, that means you've drawn something. So if you, you know, if the if the next card to draw is or the next domino to draw is number fifteen, and the domino you play is number fifteen, that means you drew and played. And if the play is blank, that means you weren't able to play anything, which means you had to draw. So in both of those cases, uh, we want to increase the starting number for the draw. Uh, otherwise, we leave it as it is. Um, so then we're going to have to add the logic here. So we're going to say, if you played it, then it's now on the board. Otherwise, if uh, if this equals um, the one that was there to draw, um, two, 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 two. so I'm just thinking through. So if, in other words, if we're on number 15, then we say if we're on, num we're on number 15, which is the one to draw, and we didn't play anything, and uh, we got to lock that, then this player has picked it up. Uh, and then I think we're back to otherwise, whatever's already there. Okay, so then Next thing I'm interested in is it, what are the ends? Uh, and again, unique formula here. So I'm going to say index side one, side two by the number played. So now there's return me from that row, and zero means give me all the columns. So that gives me the 3, 3. And then I'm, I'm going to try and keep each round in its own column. So I'm just going to transpose that so it fits in. Uh, OK, so that's the ends. So now there's 3, 3 at the end. So now we have to figure out what can player 2 play. So it's player 2 is the player to play, 3, 3 are the ends. And based on that, we can figure out what can they play. So first thing is, this has to be equal to that. And then the second thing is, at least one of these has to be equal to at least one of these. And so the way we're going to do that is sum minus minus this lock 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 equals this uh, lock flashback. Sorry, lock just the row, not the column. Um, And then I just want to know whether that is greater than zero, because it doesn't matter if there's multiple matches or not, just any match is good. So if I look down here, I can see here there's a match, because player two has it, and there's a three six, and we can play anything that has a three on one side, and here there's a match, which is a one three. Okay? Now this all of this is just a kind of helper column, so I would prefer to just have that out of the way. What I really want is to kind of filter on that and then figure out which one I want to play. Um, so what I need to be able to do is create all this dynamically. Uh, the challenge with that is that I've got uh, I've got these kind of two across being summed. So I'm going to have to use a by row to do that. So let me just paste those values there so we can compare and make sure that it comes out right. And then here's what we're going to say. We're going to say uh, So here, sorry, this piece, we can just make go like that. That's easy. Uh, and then this piece, let's say by row, uh, and the array is this, lock in. And then by row basically says, for a given array, apply a certain formula to each row of that array and give me a row of answers. And so in this case, the formula is just going to be the formula that takes a row and returns this thing, minus minus that row equals this. Uh, some of that's greater than zero. So that's my lambda. That's my by row. And I think we're good. And yes, that, so that 
in a dynamic way captures exactly what we were doing there. So that's all good. So now that I have that, um, what do I want to do with it? I want to filter. And same as before, I'm interested in um, I'm interested in the the number, but I'm also going to want to be able to sort by the total. So I'm going to start off by H stacking those two together. Actually, it might have made more sense to just lay those two columns out next to each other, but never mind. Uh, I'm going to lock that. Oops, that brought that back up. I didn't want to do that yet. Uh, stack it next to this. Also locked. Uh, Mesh back on that. So I'm going to filter that by this. Uh, and that's going to give me, so I can play uh, number 12, which has nine pips, or I can play number 14, which has four pips. So then I'm interested in the one with the most pips, so we will sort this uh, by column two in descending order. And it's a stable sort, so if there's, you know, if there's one here and one here that are both worth nine, the one that started off first will stay first, and that's exactly what we want as the tiebreakers, the one that was drawn first. Uh, so that tells me that this one here is the one I want, so that's index uh, this one, one. So that's all the logic for what gets played on the next turn if this will get you the right card to play if that player has a card that can be played. Uh, so then you just have to worry about the case where they don't. So in that case, I'm going to say if error. So all of this will error out because this filter will return no values if there's no card that they can play. And in that case, I'm interested in figuring out could they play the draw card. So then I'm going to say if, uh, and I want to do the exact same test as before. So sum of minus minus. Uh, and the row I want to check is going to be index on here. Uh, look for the draw card, uh, zero to return both rows. Uh, that equals this. Uh, I'm going to sum those, and if that's greater than zero, then I'm going to play the draw card. Otherwise, I'm not able to play the draw card, so I just put a double quote to indicate that I'm not playing anything. Okay. Uh, then we can copy it across the next draw logic, and now the last part, and maybe the thorniest part, is figuring out the logic to get from uh, one set of ends to the next. So, uh, say new pips, uh, and that's going to be the uh, same, same logic as this. Let's copy it, put it up here. Uh, just, oops, all right, move this across. So, Basically, the idea is, okay, we've got a 3-6 here, we've got a 3-3 here, how do we figure out what's coming next? The challenge with this is there's just a lot of different cases to consider. Um, so, you know, you could have a case where both of the ends are 3, and then you play a 3-3, three, three. so they're all, they're all the same thing. You could have a case where, you know, this one matches that one, but this one doesn't match, and there's, there's a lot of different variations. There might be a smarter, neater way to do this, but here's what I came up with. Uh, so I'm going to say all pips. So I'm basically going to take the unique list from here, plus here, um, and that's just going to be unique of uh, vstack of this and this. Um, so that's all the pips, and the, the total set of pips can be, I think it's possible for it to be one, it can be two, or it can be three. It can't ever be four, because you can't play something here unless at least one of these matches at least one of those. So the, I'm just going to kind of highlight here, the size of it may vary, but it can never be more than three. Uh, and then what I want is uh, count pips. So basically I want to figure out, you know, okay, so the total set is there's a three and a six. How many threes and how many sixes do we have? And the way I'm going to do that is just uh, count ifs. Uh, count that, that, plus count ifs, that is that. I'd love to be able to just v-stack two of these together and then count if that, but for some reason count if will not take a v-stack or any other calculated result as its first argument. Um, apparently this is a known issue. It makes me sad, but it is what it is. Um, so then, the, the logic here, basically you've got a few different cases for uh, for what you could have here. You could have 
four of the same thing. You could have a three of one thing and one of another. You could have two of one thing and two ones, or you could have two twos. Those are the this kind of four different scenarios you need to contend with. So I'm going to say, well, the, the first scenario you need to contend with is if you weren't able to play anything. If that's blank, then the two ends stay the same because nothing new is added to the board. Otherwise, I'm going to do a switch. I'm going to consider the four different cases of this. So I'm going to switch on concat sort. So I'm going to take the list of counts. Uh, I'm going to sort it and then concatenate it. And that's going to give me one of four, three, one, two, one, one. Oh, sorry, four, one, three, one, one, two, or two, two. Uh, so if it is four, then that's saying these and these are all the same, so you can just keep this. Uh, if it is 1, 3, uh, that's telling you you've got, um, you know, like in this case, you've got 3 of one thing and 1 of another, so like 3 threes and 1 six. In that case, 2 of the 3 things cancel each other out, and you're just left with 1 of each. So in other words, what you're left with is the list of all pips. Uh, then the next case is uh, 1, 1, 2, uh, and in that case, you basically the, the thing that there's two of cancels out, gets left in the middle, and the two edges that are unique are left. Uh, and so one way that we can get that is filter all pips where the count of pips equals one. Uh, then the next case is two two. And in that case, that's the kind of tiebreaker where the ends of the thing are let's say three and six and you have three and six. So you can either play the six and leave three or you can play the three and leave six. And in that case we're told we want to leave the smaller of the two. Uh, so we just need to, we can b-stack uh, the smaller of the two with the smaller of the two, or I guess a slightly more compact way to do that would be to say choose one colon one uh, of n of that. Um, and uh, the other case is, there shouldn't be any other case, so that's it. All right, so now I think we're in a position to start copying things over. Famous last words, but I think we are. Mm, got some value errors, but we're fine. That's where you can't play. And in this case, we just bypass that, so that's not a problem. Um, so let's see. And uh, no, we shouldn't have an inability to play. Um, OK, so let's take a quick look. Uh, so player. Player one is not able to play here, so I probably picked the wrong one here. So let's see, we started off by playing. So let's just take it piece by piece. So in the initial configuration, player one has to play, they have to play a double, and they have to play the double with the fewest pips, and that's here. So we play number one, and that's correct. So okay. Now player two has to play something that contains a three. So that can be either and this, or that's it. So they play the one three. So why does that say three six? Fourteen. No, this is giving twelve. Uh, let's see, wait. Oh, sorry, this is after round two. Beg your pardon. All right, so let's. Trust in after round one. What does player two have? Yes, yeah, so they can play this one or this one. And they want to play the one with the most pips, which is 12. So that's 3, 6. So then player 1 plays something with a 3 or a 6. And they do have, which is 6, 0. So why is that one not working out? Ah, OK. I see the issue. <laughs> it's a dumb issue, but I do see it. Uh, so I'm matching the round number instead of the player number. And I started off in round 2, where the round and the player were the same. but that does not carry over. OK, that looks better. Um, because in, in level four, we shouldn't have any cases where it, where it breaks. OK, so then the question I need to answer for levels four and five is just how many pips do both players have left in their hands after two turns each and after five turns each. So uh, for two turns each, that will just be, I'm going to sum ifs. Uh, oh, sorry, i got to take off the filter first. So we'll sum ifs, uh, the total point value, where after, is after round one, after round two, after three, yes, so after round four uh, is either one or two, uh, and then sum those two together. 
that gives me 61, which I think was, yes, that's the example answer. Good. So then we'll do a sequence of 20 starting at 51. And then we want to do the same thing here, except after uh, 10 rounds, so five plays each. And sequence, this time there are 30 of them starting from 71. And that gives 13, which does match the example. So hopefully we're on the right track here. Column input cell here. Column input cell is here. So calculate those, and then let's see if we got it right. Otherwise, it's back to debugging hell. Yes, that looks good. Uh, I got my total score up here, so if that turns into a thousand after this, then we're golden. Ah, it doesn't. How disappointing. Uh, all right, let's spend, spend 10 seconds looking at one of these. 73 is wrong. Let's take a look at 73. What's going on? So, start off with player one. Uh, has to play a double. So they have to play one, one. Fine. Then player two has to play anything with a one. So it can be that. That's it. So they have to play and two, and they do. Fine. Um, all right, hang on. Let's see. This is this is probably a bit where it's most likely to have gone wrong. So let's just look at this. So one one out of one five. So you end up with one five. That makes sense. One five and four five, the fives pair off, and you end up with one four, one four and three four. Uh, the fours pair off, and you end up with one three, fine. Uh, then you can't play, so it stays one three, fine. Then you add a one three. And you want to leave the lower number exposed, so it ends up 1-1, one, one. that makes sense. Then you can't play, so it stays 1-1. One, one. Then you play a 1-4, so it becomes 1-4. Then you play a 2-4, so it becomes 1-2. Then you play a 2-6, so it becomes 1-6. That seems to be working fine. All right, let's take a quick look. <clears throat> so player 2, and we did that one already, player 2 has to play number 2. So then we're back to player 1, and the ends are 1-5. So you can't play that, or that, or that. You can play the 2-5, or the 4-5. So you want to play the 4-5, which is 13. That's right. And you're back to player... One, two, one. Yes. Um, player 1, playing on a 1-5. Let's play number... Sorry, no, I beg your pardon. We've just done player one, so now player two playing round four. Player two uh, and playing into a one four, so they have zero five two two. So nothing they can play there. The only question is, can they draw? Um, five five. Oh, okay. So they're not drawing that, which they should be. Wait, sorry. This is the game play number four. What's going on here? Oh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong place. So before round four. Player two playing into a one four. So they can play a three four. Yes, fine. So then playing into a one three. Player one has to play. Can't play anything. So then they're the one who has to draw. So it this. Ah, damn it. So, same mistake again. This is pointing out the round number, not the player number. Ugh, stupid. All right, fine. Dumb but easily fixed. Drag it down. That looks better, and that looks better. Okay, so, I mean, it's the kind of dumb thing that can go wrong. I probably would not have debugged that on time uh, on the day, but, oh well, got the first four levels out anyway. Uh, Probably not exactly the confidence booster I wanted to spend a while in debugging land on the camera in front of everyone on the day before the round, but uh, oh well, that's what I've got. Uh, if you're taking part tomorrow, then good luck. Good luck to me, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.